everybody welcome back monday morning briefing episode number 31 it's may the 10th um summer's coming on quick we're fixing to be in summertime i want to apologize last week we didn't have one we had a lot going on monday because on friday we had sent out our newsletter because we got our leather shipment in from herman oak and so we cut up all the belt blanks we cut up a lot of belt blanks this time uh, belt material packs we cut all those up got them put on the website and then we went ahead and launched it out to our newsletter first. Like I told y'all, we were gonna start doing that, kind of give those people an opportunity to go ahead and get a hold of them uh, on whatever they needed before we kind of put it on social media. Um, by Saturday morning, they were all sold out again. We sold out all of them. I wanna thank everybody that bought some of those. It was amazing. Um, they, we didn't put anything on social media because we didn't have any left really to offer. And so we never posted it there. But that's why I said if you if you want to get kind of the first heads up on when, when stuff is restocked or when we have new patterns, be sure and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter. You can do that on our website. Just um, There's a form on the home page and m multiple other pages on there for you to sign up for that. Lots of opportunities to do that. But anyhow, we've got another leather shipment coming in. So at some point, you know, I think Herman Oaks averaging probably around three to four weeks out right now. Fortunately, that's just the way it is. I, I can't really change that or try to speed that up. So as soon as it gets here, we'll do it again. But be sure and sign up for the newsletter if you want kind of to get to know when those belt blanks are restocked first, because we will do that again. We'll, we'll always kind of launch it out our intentions is to like on that that day on friday our intention was let the newsletter know by friday evening or saturday morning then we would make a post on social media that was my plan all along just so that the newsletter kind of had their first uh, first chance just kind of get in there and get them get some there really just wasn't wasn't a need to, to post anything on social media because they were gone by by saturday morning i think we had maybe two blemish packs left and that was it and so and we put a lot of uh, packs on there so um, i apologize if you missed out this time hopefully next time we'll get some more so monday morning i got in here and just basically focused on all the shipments we had so many of them to do that i really just wanted to get those out as quickly as possible i started packaging all those up and um and then we ended up my little boy got sick at school monday and so progressively long story short all week long it kind of went through the house and everybody everybody had a little bit of a stomach bug except for me i was able to avoid getting it and so that was a good thing and uh, but claudia stayed home with the kids and and took care of them and did that and and um, she unfortunately ended up getting it as well so i ended up having to run all the errands as far as getting feed and doing all the things that she does during the week and uh, we we worked through it and made it all happen and we were able to get everything shipped out um, i got everything packaged up and shipped out of here Tuesday, I guess. Everything kind of went out Tuesday. We had a few go out Wednesday, but everything went out. It just kind of kept me running all week long, and uh, I was kind of in and out of the shop between running errands and doing things things for them and checking on them. And so we just weren't able to get the Monday morning video done last week, unfortunately. But everybody's doing good. Everybody made it through. They, they, they made it through the deal. Everybody's good. We had a good Mother's Day weekend. As far as other packs, the wallet packs, the money clip wallets, they're doing really well. So I appreciate that. Anybody that's buying those, those things seem to be selling really well. I'm kind of getting it down now on the, between the splitter and the clicker, like getting a good weight on all this stuff. And and um, and so I hope that those of y'all that have bought them have feel, felt like that the finished wallet was a, was the correct weight. I think that's just about right. And the same thing goes for our bifold wallet. I did some work over the week and weekend since I was kind of tied up, you know, and didn't know, you know, I'd get like an hour or two in here and then have to run an errand uh, for them or or check on them or do whatever. So it's kind of in and out of the shop. So I did work on saddles. I actually did get quite a bit done, surprisingly, but I ended up working on the bifold wallet. I found some leather. Now this leather is very nice stuff. And I was told about it from Tex Hollis. He's a friend of mine that does uh, shooting stuff for skeet shoot trap shooters. And he makes bags and things like that. He's on Instagram, check him out. He does really good work. But he had told me about um, this material that he was buying from C. Loy out of El Paso, and that's C. Loy, C, the letter C, dash Loy, L-O-Y. Um, you can find them online. They, they mainly supply to boot makers and stuff like that, and he's got he's got a bunch of different uh, specialty leathers on there and stuff. No, no veg tan, really, stuff. It's just like lining leathers, calf skins, some really nice stuff. But this in particular is a goat skin leather, and Tex was telling me about it, 
um, I don't think he knew I was hunting anything like that, but he was showing me some of it that he had when he came by here a few weeks back. And I was like, man, that that is almost exactly like kangaroo. And it's very thin. It's probably two ounce, two to three ounce, something like that. So anyway, he was telling me about it. I looked up Sea I ended up calling them, never done business with them before. Ended up ordering a bunch of skins of this and it's goat skin is what it is. It's a aniline, I think they call it an aniline tanned goat skin very very clean stuff there's there's hardly any blemishes in it at all it's very clean very nice um, comes in a lot of different colors and if you're following us on instagram you saw this one wallet here which i did out of latigo belly and which is one of my favorite uh, leathers to use for just a nice simple wallet and this thing here turned out really really good out of this leather so i used our dies that we had made for the bifold and went ahead and mocked one up. I sewed it with some turquoise thread, um, and then we actually used edge paint on the edge. Had a lot of people comment and say, I didn't know you used edge paint. I never really do use edge paint, but on something like this, where you've got a colored thread, colored interior, I kind of wanted to try something different. So what I actually used, and Maker's Leather Supply actually made a comment about that. Um, I actually made a comment about that on their uh, on their Instagram or Facebook or something about using their new uh, Alpha 6 paints as an edge paint. Um, and I had tried it before they posted that on something that I had made. I think it was one of those new long wallets, the ladies long wallets. I used some of this as an edge paint and it works really well. I don't use a lot of edge paint, so I don't have any and I didn't know what the difference is between edge paint and acrylic paint. So I'm just dumb enough, I just tried it, and it ended up working great. My, the wallet I personally carry, I used it, uh, it on there as well, and it seems to be holding up really well. Um, I carry a snuff can and my knife in my pocket with my wallet in the same pocket, and so that's kind of marred up the edges a little bit. Um, if I uh, move my knife to the other pocket and quit dipping snuff, I wouldn't have to worry about my wallet getting so damaged. But anyhow, other than that, it seems to work really well as your edge coat. And so you might give that a try. Um, I'm sure Angelus maybe would do the same thing, but there's, there's something different about these Alpha, Alpha 6 paints there. It just seems like they're a little better. So, but anyway, I made the wallet with that, with this blue, which is a, it's just a blue goat skin. This stuff is very economical. It's not super expensive. Um, Kangaroo can run anywhere from, uh, I've seen it from anywhere from $12 to $17 a foot. Um, and they're not, they're not big skins, obviously. They're kind of small, and it's hard to get. And so that's what we've been talking about on here uh, previously is just trying to find a good source for kangaroo. And I've, I've gotten some leads. Some of y'all have messaged me or emailed me and let me know about some leads that y'all had on some kangaroo, and so I really appreciate that. We've been looking into those, and, um, and we'll certainly offer that. But this goat skin for an economical very quality product this stuff i'm really impressed with he sent me i think i got eight or ten skins and just started playing with it last week and like i said the wallet turns out great the leather looks phenomenal in there it's a very glossy finish i don't know if he has any kind of matte finish on any of these but i like the way i like the way this stuff looks it works out really well i even made one that i tooled i just did a basket stamp just to see if the weight of the body that i used would work. So this body is 5.6 and that's what I talk about in the video. If you haven't seen our billfold video, there is a video that shows you exactly how to build this billfold wallet. Um, this is one of our designs here that in that video shows you exactly how to make it. In there I do use 5.6 and so I had ordered some 5.6 from Herman Oak and went ahead and clicked a few of them out. It ended up working out great. I think the weight's perfect. It's a, it's it's got some some body to it, but it's not super thick. And one reason is because of using this lightweight goat skin, using something like a kangaroo, anything like that is going to keep your wallets a lot thinner than trying to use a three ounce or four ounce veg tan Herman Oak leather. Um, I have made a few of these out of that, but it just seems a little bit heavy, and so I end up having to use a thinner body piece which if you're going to tool it i'd rather see that body at least five ounce just because it tools a little bit better but so i went ahead and clicked out and we will click out more this week but i clicked out a bunch of a bunch of bodies of the bill folds and then a bunch of interiors now i clicked out two colors as of right now i'm going to call today and get some more of that goat skin but i've got a chocolate uh all the pieces for all the tea pockets and all the pieces and then some black so I've got those two clicked out. I clicked out, I think, a dozen of each. And so those are ready to go. We will put those on the website sometime this week. I'm not sure exactly when. And I've got to get a little drawing 
printed up for it because if you've got the pattern pack that you can purchase if you want to build this wallet um, that goes along with that video then it'll tell you all the all the lines because i it'll tell you all the cut patterns and everything you need for the pockets but i cut this little half moon out here and here on the bottom once you get the interior built then i take a, a half moon punch and punch that out you can do anything you want but you need to cut that piece out somehow so that it gives it a little bit of room there because the outside of the wallet, the body is longer than the interior. And that's what allows it to fold and shut very easily. And you don't get all those wrinkles on the inside in the middle. Um, and so on the handout that'll come with the, the uh, material packs, it'll basically uh, mention a couple little things as far as why your body is longer than your liners. And then it'll also give you a a little drawing so that you can mark where this needs to be cut out and how much to cut out because not everybody's bought the pattern pack and some people may not want the pattern pack they just want the material pack and a, a one sheet handout is something where i can ensure that you at least got got the information that you need to be able to put that material pack to use so those will be out sometime this week so we'll finally have the billfold on there and we'll we'll do that and i'll probably end up adding some colors we might do some more of them in the blue and stuff i'll try to keep a variation of the of the different different colors in there and we might do some of the money clip wallets as well with some of these colors because some people like the colored interiors and so we might do some of those i got a couple of these in turquoise i've got this one here in like a I don't know, it looks like a whiskey color or something like that. But I'm gonna get a bunch more of these skins from him. But anyway, check out Seeloy if you wanna get some uh, some goat skin for your projects as far as liners and stuff. I think he said a lot of bootmakers are using those for the interior of their boot tops, stuff like that, but really nice stuff. I've been really happy with it. And then something I actually did the week before last um, is I ended up figuring out the gusset panels on Claudia's bag so on the yoke tote so we got the yoke tote kind of assembled if you're following us on Instagram you probably saw that but the bag itself is together and so now we've just got to figure out the top piece like I said it'll be a piece that'll just sew in on the top here and that'll kind of hang in there and that's where the zipper will be and that'll finish off the bag and then we'll do the handles and this bag will be pretty well pretty well ready to go so the yoke totes coming along good and uh, I was really pleased with how well the the gusset panels went in, my, my idea kind of worked. Um, I had to inset them a little bit further than I originally intended to, just because of the way the machine is designed. I needed that space in there to be able to stitch along this edge. It's gotta go in so far to be able to get there. So we had to inset them a little bit further than than what I might have, uh, might have done otherwise. Um, I'm glad I didn't glue it up as shallow as I was thinking to do. I had to check that that distance of that throat to be able to be sure it would fit in there. But yo tote came along, it's coming along good and it's almost wrapped up. I wanted to get it done for um, Mother's Day, but that wasn't able to happen. So we didn't finish it for Mother's Day, but she knows about it anyway. I ended up making her a head stall for Mother's Day. And uh, of course got her some a plant and some other stuff, typical Mother's Day stuff. But we got her, a, I made her a head stall with our brand on it and, um, and she was excited. So. The kids gave her that for Mother's Day and everything. So, but hopefully y'all had a good Mother's Day weekend and uh, enjoyed enjoyed some time with family or just relaxing or anything like that. That's that's great. I got a ton of parts cut out this weekend too, or I just tried to cut and get ahead of myself. So I've got all the billets and stirrup leathers for one of these saddles. I've got billets and stirrup leathers and plugs and different parts, swell covers. I've got all kinds of pieces cut over here for these two saddles so that we can make a little progress on those. Um, this week so we've got to make up some time I've still got to retool this piece for the uh, for the Pony Express bag so we're gonna to try to do that and uh, got a bunch of belts to do we don't have a whole lot to look at on the saddles I got the skirts off of it and uh, I'll show you that we got we got the skirts off and got them cut I got them ported for our, our flank rigging I got the marks on here for our in skirt rig so that's ready to go and so we'll start plugging those skirts, get those wooled, get the riggings in it, and then get that mounted to the to the saddle so we can get that one moved forward. Um, but I'll show you on the repair saddle kind of what we got done on the one that we had washed that we were putting the padded seat in and stuff. We got that seat in there. So let's check that out right quick. All right, here's our repair saddle. And this is the seat that we were stitching up in a video or two back. We got it all stitched up in there. Um, and got it pop stitched. You can definitely machine stitch these. A lot of guys will just sew them on a machine. I prefer to pop stitch them in with some heavy thread. I think that I just think they kind of look a little better 
Um, that's just the way I like to do it. So now we've got the binder cut out over here. And so this piece will be skived and prepped and then we'll, we'll mount that and get the binder sewn. And then we can start conditioning this saddle and going from there. We've got the housings cut, the fenders cut, stirrup leathers cut, billets. We're replacing a lot of parts on this saddle uh, for this gentleman, but he's got enough room in it for what he give for it that uh, he should still be okay if he ever decided to sell it. He should be able to get his money back out of it. But we've got quite a bit of quite a bit invested in this saddle as far as uh, replacing parts. I went ahead and replaced the rig and slides on here. They were pretty 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 messed up and old. And so we went ahead and got those replaced as well. And on our custom saddle here, you can see we got the skirts off. We got our back riggings put in. I've got to screw those down and everything, but they're glued in and, and fit where they're going to go. And so the skirts now, now that they're dry, they've been ported. We've got our marks for our front rigging. And so these skirts are ready to be plugged and uh, have the rigging installed. And then we'll put those on with uh, wool skin and we'll be ready to go start fitting the seat and doing doing the housings and all those other things so this saddle is moving along really good so since the last monday morning video we did um we had two podcast posts one each week um the first one was with parker from stock and barrel really interesting guy he's a young guy in the industry um, and he's got a, a really cool uh, perspective on how he markets his business and uh, he kind of does his deal and you know the items that he makes is mainly wallets and belts bags um, he's getting into making some of the gunslinger type holsters and stuff like that for revolvers and things he, do, he does a really good job marketing his business he makes a really clean product but if you've been on YouTube at all and have searched for leather working videos or you know leather crafting videos, you've probably run across one of Parker's videos. But be sure and check that episode out. I really enjoyed talking to him. And then last week we had one that was a lot of fun for me to do an interview with Nancy Martini with Martini Saddle Company. She's from Idaho. And I first saw her on the uh, Art of the Cowgirl stuff, uh, some kind of promotion deal that I saw online or something like that. I saw some of her work and was really impressed and have been kind of kind of following her ever since then and kind of watching what she's doing and you know she just she builds good using cowboy saddles that are really really pretty she's she's a really good tooler um, she's just a very interesting interesting saddle maker to visit with and um, and she's been in the game a while she's been building saddles a while she's got a heck of a business a heck of a following and like i said i think you're really going to enjoy that interview um, we had a lot of good feedback from it when it posted we had a lot of people that knew nancy and we're, we're really excited to see her on the podcast so be sure and check out that episode as well and check out her website and some of the stuff that she does she's a very interesting saddle maker and i really enjoyed the interview with her but if you haven't listened to lost trade podcast yet be sure to go to our website at the top of our website there's a button that says lost trade podcast you can click on that and listen to any of the episodes that you'd like to there on that page or you can find it on apple or spotify so be sure and check that out there as well I want to thank y'all. I'm sorry this week's going to be a short episode. We I've got to get back to it. Uh, we lost a lot of time last week with everything going on. So, but everybody's good. Just everybody's doing a lot better. So they're going to stay home one more day just to be safe, and that way we don't want to spread anything, especially this kind of bug, um, to anybody at school or anything. So they're going to stay home one more day, and then they'll be back at it. So we're we're back in the shop. Um, hopefully, uh, full eight hours a day this week, and we can get a lot of stuff done. But I've got some catch up to do. So that's what I'm going to be working on this week. I appreciate you guys. Be sure and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next week in the Monday morning briefing.